I'm uh, Caro from the RCA. Um, I'm based in London, I'm currently doing some work in exhibition design and uh, some more um, yeah, teaching work at the RCA. Uh, so I hope, you will hope, uh, I hope you will all have the opportunity to come to the expo later and see some of the students' work. Uh, but here I'm going to show you actually my, uh, one of my final projects uh, from uh, my AMA uh, last year that I've done for the RCA degree show, which uh, was called the Exquisite Cabinet. And it was displayed during two weeks at the RCA, and it was an experimental installation um, meant to encourage creative thinking and sharing stories with the, the audience. And so I'm going to come back to it in a minute. But first, um, I'd just like to show you this image because I think it, it summarizes some of aspects of my work and inspiration. So this is um, a surrealist object created by Man Ray, uh, Man Ray in the 20s. And surrealist objects, usually what they do is they bring two images together or two familiar objects uh, together that were not meant to be associated together. And the result is that it is usually in an object that you can't name, um, you can't name it straight away. So it becomes something else uh, that is meant to challenge the perception of your um, the, your perception of things. Um, and it will uh, actually will gain a new meaning uh, through uh, people's uh, interpretation. Um, and actually, so what they did, uh, the surrealists in the 20s, uh, they were collecting those um, randomly uh, objects on the market. Uh, so where um, all those found objects found uh, new um, resonances when arranged in uh, un unprecedented and uh, provocative configuration. And according to uh, André Breton, uh, he thought that this process or method uh, would help them what he called the systematic derangement of all the senses. And according to him, we must not hesitate to bewilder, bewilder the sensation. Uh, so that's one of my um, strong inspiration. And actually, when looking back at some work I've done before, um, as a more artist, I guess. But, um, Surrealism has always been really present in my um, in my work, um, and I'm very interested in looking at the potential of surrealism, visual aesthetic, and methodologies uh, to encourage imagination and creative inquiry through uh, artistic um, interventions. Um, and I guess I'm really I'm really interested to see um, uh, what happens when people have something um, are confronted with a, a physical object that doesn't fit the concept. So it's that way, like, I'm really interested in surrealism and those objects that challenge uh, meaning, meaning making and interpretation. Anyway, so um, this, during my AMA uh, last year, I've done a lot of observation in museums. I wrote my dissertation about um, interpretative handling objects um, that um, encourage experiential learning in gallery setting. So I guess my focus is um, objects and uh, how to encourage imagination and creative inquiry with the help of objects in museum galleries. And I've done a lot of observation uh, in different museums, and that one was at the Horniman Museum. Uh, they have an amazing handling collection, uh, thousands of objects, that people can come in and, um, and play around with the objects. Um, but, uh, so you have those discovery boxes that you can um, um, take objects from and play around with them. Uh, it's unfortunate that they place in those plastic boxes anyway uh, but what I've um, observed in different museums and that one as well talking with facilitators and museum staff is that the difficulty of the of the staff to get the people get the visitors to engage in, in creative ways and to engage the imagination with the object because basically what they do they take the object and they just want to know where this comes from and um, what the title um, you know what when is it made what is it um, and really the really trying they were really trying to push people to use those objects in other ways. So that was my, my start um, for my dissertation. Um, so then at the same time, actually, I was, um, um, I was observing another collection of objects, a very, very different and special one. Uh, it's called the Object Dialogue Box. And um, so they made, uh, it's another co kind of collection of objects. It's handmade uh, by two artists called uh, Carl and Kimberly Foster. Um, they're from a partnership uh, called HEDSO, the Artistic Creative Practitioners, working with museums and galleries. And they really <coughs> developed those curiosity boxes inspired from the space or the, um, the collection of the museums. And they developed those beautiful artworks, well, they, they like artworks, really well-crafted objects, 
again inspired from surrealism, so it's usually hybrid between two objects that be used in session with adults or children, and people can just play with it. And the way, so the way they use it, this is another one at uh, Turner in, um, in Margate, the first one was in Sheffield. So all the books are very different, they unfold in very different ways, they have different narratives uh, related to the space, um, and usually the way they use it, then, well, they use it in different ways, actually, according to uh, each institution. Uh, um, the, the participants could be encouraged to touch the object and to walk around with, uh, with it in the gallery, and this would uh, enable them to connect uh, in different ways uh, to um, the artifact on display. So the touch, really, uh, the, the aspect of touch is something I'm very interested in. Again, surrealism, uh, they challenge, you couldn't touch object maybe, but they challenge really the perception <coughs> of touch with objects. Um, and this, this work especially really um, enables the sense of ownership and proximity with the object. And so you really, um, um, you really encourage experiential learning, uh, I thought that was uh, some findings, and you encourage the visitor engagement, create new insights uh, in the collection, uh, of the museum by creating new way of navigating the gallery with those objects in hand. Um, and really this aspect of touch is very important. So Carl, um, one of the artists, mentioned that when people have got, got something delicate in their hands, body language change and spoken language change as well. So I really like this, like he said, delicate object seems to bring about delicate discussion. So how about the fact the touch can really inform and influence your relationship with the object. Um, okay, coming back to um, my cabinet. Um, so this, this, this work was, a, I really have to stress it, it's, a, it's an experiment. Um, it was one of the final work for the degree show, and it embodies, I tried to put all the, well, some of the research within this work. So it's like a physical manifestation, I guess, of my interest uh, uh, from last year during the EMA. Um, so the cabinet was displayed in the room and basically what it does, so we invite you to come towards it and to play around with the drawers. And in each drawer you have four objects um, that you are invited to play from the top of the cabinet. And by doing so, um, this will trigger um, <coughs> we'll trigger on the screen uh, the last seven words of the last stories, the last person stories. So you're invited to carry on with the last person stories by embedding your own snippets of stories, fragments, inspired by the object and by the, the last seven words. But of course you're free to break down the narrative or to carry on trying to carry on the narrative. Um, and this actually, yeah. Uh, this is again inspired by some surrealism <coughs> methods, like the exquisite corpse, the cadavre ski, so, which was, I don't know if you're familiar with this game. Um, it's a game that invites people to collectively um, assemble words and images together. And in the case of, um, this is images of course, but in the case of words, you would start a sentence for the paper, leave only a few words, uh, I think it's usually one word um, that you can uh, visible for the next participant, and then you would carry on your sentence, and then when you unfold it, it would reveal this uh, absurd, curious, um, abstract, um, very, yeah, um, sentence that would kind of challenge your uh, imagination and creative inquiry. So it was, it was used in the 20s, and I believe the Exclusive Corpse is the name that the first game when the André Breton and the Surrealists played the game, the first uh, sentence that resulted in the game was the exquisite corpse um, will drink the new wine. So the Kadarevsky boire le vin nouveau in French. But anyway, so that kept the exquisite corpse to name the game, which I found quite interesting. Um, so that's another method that I've used in the cabinet. So uh, it triggers people's uh, imagination and, and start because it's never really easy for them to start from nothing. So at least they have a bit of a narrative to carry on. Um, and then. I think during, um, during my MA, actually, uh, in the information experience design course, there is uh, one important aspect, is digital and physical. So we are, I think all the students are very interested in uh, both aspects uh, and try to explore those both aspects. And so the cabinet, you have this physical encounter with the object, and then you embed some digital content, and then you would output the story in the back of the cabinet. So it would work with um, RFID type technology, and uh, the printer, it would be a thread for each story, for each object. And what was nice is that at the start, it started with nothing, and then for the two weeks, then the, 
the paper with the, uh, the longer physical size of shame would, would grow and, and then you would have different behaviors, so people playing in the, in the front with the object and other people reading out loud uh, as like a performative uh, um, uh, act in the back of the cabinet. Um, yeah, so again, physical and digital, so that's the little stories at the end of the, um, of the show that I collected, physical aspect of archiving, and then, so I yeah, put the story and then everything was stored online um, on a digital platform. Um, yes, so to come back to the four objects, so again, um, inspired from previous research and the surrealism, those objects uh, are made of um, different fragments. Um, I don't have time to go through them all, and the story of them is uh, much longer. I, they have a bigger background. They're all inspired from the Johnson Museum, another project I've done before. So I can tell you a specific story through those objects, but in the context of the show, they were just used as, uh, as triggers. Um, and I can't go through the process of making them, but it was all informed by some uh, experiments in the Johnson Museum with participants. Uh, anyway, but um, the way I've made them, uh, then I've listed all those keywords uh, I've collected from participants uh, about the themes of the Johnson, but I can't, yeah, I don't have time here to go for that, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I've, um, I've, I've made them, so I've, um, yeah, I've made them in a physical uh, way, and then I've read, well, this is it, uh, so they're all hybrid between different uh, objects, and then I've read scanned them, and then again, so this and then 3D printed them. But um, what was interesting is that, um, again, looking back to my case study with the object dialogue box, when they, they merged those two objects together, they were trying for the people to not see the separation, so they become one whole new object that you can't name. So it, it triggers your imagination to think, what is this object? And with the 3D printing, when it's output as a uh, as a 3D printed object, it's a um, you can't see anymore the handcuff and the cup, it's a one whole new thing. So so you just wonder, there is some familiar element to it, so you can connect, so this is a handcuff, but wait, there is a cut, so oh, what is this? And then hopefully the narrative would merge together. So here, this is some of the um, uh, fragments of the story. So the, 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 the handcuff, the idea of isolation, jail, and then the traditional ritual of tea uh, would be merged together, and the stories would be um, inspired from the object, and yeah, the narrative would, would merge together nicely as the object. Um, and then this is just uh, so hard actually to, to show. Um, but it was really nice. Like some uh, some of the cultural um, cultural aspect uh, went into the object. So with the cat, like this Aladdin uh, narrative. Um, and uh, this one was the extract of, of four uh, four participants. So it was really nice. Some of them were really well followed. People really tried hard to follow. Um, um, yeah. To follow each other's story, others completely break down after 10, usually after 10 people it would break down. Uh, so I spent two weeks to observe the cabinet, uh, but really what was important to this object is that there was this familiar and unfamiliar element to it, so people could connect to it to, uh, yeah. Um, and the technology was quite interesting, so people in the stories, people would, um, 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 yeah, uh, um, with, with kind of uh, the impact of the technology with the would be in the narrative as well. Um, and then, of course, the object broke a few times, uh, but it's, you know, the touch, and I was really surprised no one really stole any object. I was there most of the time, but, um, but it was nice how the breath actually um, informed the story as well, uh, people's stories. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, and again, so I really took this as an experiment. So I was around and I, I got a lot of feedback and I observed, I did a lot of observation around the object, mm -hmm. uh, which was really nice. Um, and I guess uh, what was really nice as well is the work was selected by Tim Marlowe in London for an exhibition, uh, for a festival, and I really liked what he said about the work. So this seems to be where surrealism enters the digital age, the kind of postmodern cabinet of curiosities with narrative twists. Uh, so I found it really nice, and uh, I'm carrying on the research. I'm going to reuse some of the um, idea behind uh, the system to other show uh, soon. Uh, again, about uh, imagination and creative inquiry in gallery with the help of physical and tangible elements. And I'm looking for research right now to uh, look into surrealism and how to bring surrealism, surrealism methods in the context of exhi exhibition design practice. So yeah, this is where I am right now. So thank you very much for your time.